हम लोग बात कर रहे हैं सीक्वेंस ऑफ रियल नंबर्स की तो क्या होते हैं सर में जो सीक्वेंस ऑफ रियल नंबर्स है वो होता क्या है वो एक फंक्शन की तरह बिहेव करता है नेचुरल नंबर्स से रियल नंबर्स में यानी कि उसकी जो इनपुट होगी वो नेचुरल नंबर्स होंगे जो आउटपुट होगी वो रियल नंबर्स होंगे हमारे पास में क्या हो सकता है जैसे हमारे पास उन्होंने एग्जाम्पल इसको रिप्रेजेंट ऐसे करते हैं ए एन के साइड में फंक्शन होगा जहां पर आप इनपुट में वन टू थ्री फोर डालते जाएंगे नेचुरल नंबर्स और आपके पास आउटपुट आते चले जाएंगे अब रेंज सेट क्या होती है हमने फंक्शन में पढ़ा था रेंज होती थी जो उसकी इमेजेस बनती थी ओवरऑल जो रिजल्ट आता था सो द सेट ऑफ ऑल डिस्टिंक्ट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ सीक्वेंस अब सीक्वेंस आपने बनाया उसके जो भी एलिमेंट्स होंगे जैसे अगर मैंने वन बाय वन वन बाय टू वन बाय थ्री ऐसे बनाए तो ये जो एलिमेंट्स आपको दिख रहे हैं ये सब एलिमेंट्स क्या होंगे उसके रेंज सेट में आएंगे और इसको ऐसे रिप्रेजेंट किया जाता है ए एन ऑल द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ ए वन ए टू ए थ्री जहां पर एन क्या है इट बिलोंग्स टू द नेचुरल नंबर्स रेंज साइड इज आल्सो डिफाइंड डिनोटेड बाय आर ऑफ ए वेयर दिस डिपेंड्स द डिनोट्स द सीक्वेंस एंड आर डिनोट्स द दैट इट इज अ रेंज सेट नाउ व्हाट इज बाउंडेड सेट बाउंड सेट द टर्म डिफाइंस इटसेल्फ व्हिच इज बाउंडेड है ना लिमिटेशंस वी हैव सो अ सीक्वेंस एस एन इज डिफाइंड एज बाउंडेड इफ इट्स रेंज सेट इज बाउंडेड बाउंडेड का मतलब क्या है वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हेन वी हैव सम अपर बाउंड एंड वी आल्सो हैव सम लोअर बाउंड वी डिड डिस्कस्ड इट इन सुप्रीमम एंड इनफिनिमम थिंग्स सो द सुप्रीमम एंड इनफिनिमम ऑफ द रेंज सेट इज द सुप्रीमम एंड इनफिनिमम ऑफ द सीक्वेंस सो इफ समबडी आस्क यू व्हाट आर द सुप्रीमम ऑफ दिस सीक्वेंस व्हाट आर द इनफिनिमम ऑफ दिस सीक्वेंस सो व्हाट यू विल डू यू जस्ट फाइंड द रेंज सेट and the supremum and infimum of that range set will be come the supremum and infimum of that sequence okay next point if the range of sequence this is a sequence and its range is finite then there exists an alpha a real number such that sn equals to r for infinitely many values of n so what what it means it is saying that i have a, a sequence n and this is the range set Now, if this range set is finite, now the sequence we know is an infinite thing, na? It is corresponding to the natural numbers. Natural numbers are infinite, so the terms in the sequence will also be infinite. But it is saying that the range set is finite. So, what does it mean? It means there will be infinitely many terms in the sequence which are same as some alpha means. There will be infinitely many terms which are just real numbers, same real numbers, right? Yeah? Copy paste. Now, what are monotony sequences? Monotony sequences we will call any monotony sequences monotonically increasing when s n plus one is greater than or equal to s n. Means the next term is either greater or it is equal to the previous term. Similarly, we call any sequence as monotonically decreasing if the next term is less than equal to previous term. Now, very important thing is it can be this and equal sign is also there. Right? Now, there is an another type which is strictly increasing means we are very strict about increasing. We will never be equal. Right? So, if here I am saying only the Less than sign, no equal sign is there. So if the next term is greater than the previous term, always we call it a strictly increasing function uh, sequence. And if the next term is less than the previous term, always we call it a strictly decreasing. So there are these four type of sequences. Now what is the eventual nature? Eventual means it just happened, है ना? So a sequence, a sequence of real numbers, as it is called, we will call it eventually monotonically increasing. Now we discussed about the monotonically increasing thing. I just added the word eventually. Eventually means the condition of monotonically increasing is there, but it happens after some m. Means a one, a two, a three. These are the term. There will be some term a m, and after this term a m, 
it will also continue till infinity after this term it behaves like monotonically increasing and after some am after some term then such sequences are called eventually means this sequence was not monotonically increasing by the first term but after some terms it became monotonically increasing so we call it eventually monotonically increasing now in the same pattern we can say what is eventually monotonically decreasing it means after some term am the sequence becomes monotonically decreasing then we will call it eventually monotonically decreasing you can see the definition is same condition is same but he added this condition for n greater than or equal to m means after some term of the sequence now what is the meaning of eventually constant sequence it means after some terms there must be an term am and after that term am what happens all the terms of sequence becomes constant so let's say 1 2 3 5 7 7 7 7 7 now this term this sequence is eventually constant it was not constant initially you know so the sequence of natural numbers now what is the sequence of natural number we were discussing till now the sequence of real numbers and what was it it is a function from natural numbers to the real numbers means the output were real numbers So when now I am talking about sequence of natural number, what it means? I am talking a function which is from natural numbers to natural number. Means the output of the function, output of the sequence, all must be natural numbers. Or I can say all the terms in the sequence have to be natural numbers. Yeah. Now what are some properties of this? Every sequence of natural number has to be bounded below. Because we know that the all the natural numbers are bounded below. We have the lowest. natural number is 1 so when my output of a sequence is natural number so it is obvious that the sequence of natural number will be bounded below next this is done now if p is a limit point of sequence p is a limit point of any sequence of natural number then an equals to b for infinitely many values of n means if it is a now in all these points are for sequence of natural numbers it is not necessary for the uh, sequence of real numbers now the third point sequence of natural numbers is convergent if and only if it is eventually constant so if you can see if somebody uh, give you a sequence of a natural number and asking you that it is convergent or divergent so what you will say you will see that if the sequence is eventually constant or not if the sequence is eventually constant then it means it is convergent otherwise it is not because here the relation is if and only if you know if this happens then that will happen and if that thing happens then the previous one will also happen now let's talk about what are the limit points of a sequence now uh if i have a real number p now again i am back to the sequence of real numbers i am talking that in general is said to be limit point of sequence if every neighborhood of p contains infinite number of the elements of its given sequence means if you have some sequence and i let's say this is point p and i want to check this is a limit point of sequence or not so if you draw any neighborhood We have discussed it in previous class. What is neighborhood? We can see in the playlist. If I have this neighborhood, every neighborhood of point P contain how many elements? Infinitely many elements of the sequence. Then we will say that the P is a limit point of sequence. If if you know have seen the video of point set topology, we discussed about what is in limit point of a set. what are neighborhoods if you know the both of the definition you can also understand the limit point of the sequence yeah? so for these definitions we will discuss it further so please uh, see that video earlier then you will understand it better next another definition of limit point is the first definition was in a statement form the other the definition is more mathematical form so a point p is limit point if i have a sequence and for every epsilon greater than 0 sn means the terms of the sequence they belong to this thing and what does this mean see p is the point p minus epsilon means a very small thing here this distance is epsilon 
So this point will be p minus epsilon. And a very small distance on the right side. This is all. This distance is epsilon. So this point will become p plus epsilon. And when I am saying p minus epsilon, p plus epsilon, then actually what it means? This is actually the neighborhood of point p. So I am just writing it in mathematical form. So in this neighborhood, for infinitely many values of n, is it means infinitely many terms of the sequence are contained in this neighborhood of p. Same thing, just in another format. A real number p is not a limit point. This is important. You know, when now we have discussed when a point is limit point, we should know when a point is not a limit point. That is also important. You know? So we will not uh, any point is not counted as limit point of sequence if there exists at least one neighborhood. Of p, which contains only finite number. See, I reversed the terms. There he was saying that every every neighborhood, instead of every neighborhood, here I am saying at least one neighborhood. Here I was saying that infinitely many numbers of elements. Here it is saying finite number of elements. So everything is reversed. So we know when a point is limit point, and we also know when a point is not a limit point. So Limit point of sequence need not be a limit point of the range set. Now this is an important thing. Now limit point of sequence and limit point of a range set. They may be equal or they may not be equal. It is always not the same thing. They are two different things. Now, if in exam someone gives you a sequence and he asks you what are the limit point of sequence, so what are the different methods of finding the limit point of a sequence? Now, representation on number line, the first method is just if you can try to draw the sequence which is given to you on the number line, as if I have this sequence. So if I want to draw it, first of all, what will be the sequence 1 upon 1, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 3, 1 upon 4, so on. So if I want to draw this on number line, first of all, 1 upon 1 will come here. Then it is 1 upon 1. Then 1 upon 2 will be somewhere here. Then 1 upon 3 will be somewhere here. Uh, 3. Then 1 upon 4. 1 upon 5. Tick, 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 tick. I will keep going, keep going, 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 going near to. There will be term 1 upon 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it will be very close to zero, but I will never reach zero. So you can think if I take point O and I draw any neighborhood of O zero, you can see there will be infinitely many elements in every neighborhood of the zero. So zero is a limit point of this sequence. And so this way we can find. What is the another method if you can't draw the uh, represent the sequence of the number line? Then what we can do? Then there is another method. If the range set has a limit point, then the sequence has limit point. So what you will do, you will take the sequence. This is method 2. You will try to find the range set. And then try to find the limit points of the range set. The limit point of range sets will become the limit points of sequence. But the converse need not be true. The limit point of sequence may not always be the limit point of the range set. Okay. If this method also doesn't work, then we have another method. If the range set is finite, again, then there will be an alpha. You will see that alpha for infinitely many values of n. We discussed it in the previous slide. If range set is finite, then there will be a real number which will occur infinitely many times in the sequence. Then this alpha, which is occurring infinitely many times, it will become the limit point of the sequence. So these are the three methods to finding the limit point of any sequence. Okay. Now there is Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem. We also discussed this Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem in the point set topology video. Uh, it is a quite similar, but we are talking now in terms of sequence here. So he is saying every bounded sequence has a limit point. Now there we said if ever, there is any bounded set, then it must have a, a, a and it has infinitely many elements. A infinitely many uh, set, a bounded set has a limit point with set. Now sequence has infinitely many elements because it is corresponding to the natural numbers. And now I am saying sequence is bounded. Then what will happen? Actually, it is saying infinitely many elements. 
and it is bound its second condition so this says there has to be a limit point this is the consequence you know? so this is the similar goal there no stress you know but in terms of sequence now what is subsequence now uh, a very uh, basic thing we if, we know if we there is a set we know what is the meaning of subset if we have inspector somewhere we know what is the meaning of sub inspector you know? something something related a similar thing with small power something smaller than the major one now again it is a mapping defined on k and k and now now let, let me just you can see the definition i am just telling you if i have this set 1 2 3 4 5 5 this is my sequence n what do you do you just take some terms of this sequence you know Uh, which is also increasing you know, the next previous terms now this uh, let's say i am taking the 2n 2n uh, minus 1 terms or let's say 2n minus 1 terms so now this sequence i am taking some parts of the previous sequence so this will be called the sub sequence of the previous one you know uh, you can take all the even uh, digits you can take all the odd positions so the same thing is being said in the definition uh, it should be de strictly decreasing it means uh, when you are taking the terms of a sequence it doesn't mean first of all you take this term then 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 you take this term you know? so when you are taking the terms of a sequence they should be strictly increasing order like this 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 and these selected terms will form a new sequence which we will call the subsequence of the previous one and this is the definition now what is complementary sequence if you know the de definition of complementary set what is it if i have a set and i want to find the complementary set what i do i will subtract the set by the universal set same thing will happen here if you have a sequence uh, uh, let's say sn and you have another set its sub sequence s and b and you want to find the complementary of this sub sequence this is the sequence and this is its sub sequence so if you find the sub sequence of this sequence what it will be it will be about the remaining all the terms these are all the i am denoting it by s and q these are all the remaining terms of the sequence and it we will call them that it is complementary sequence now if the it contain sn you contain all the remaining terms of sn so you can also say that if you just take the union of these two subsequences what you will get you will again get the original sequence one more property is there because i am subtracting this sequence from the universal i am getting the this one so it means if i just take the union if i take the intersection means if i want to find what are the common terms in there so there will be no common term in two complementary sequences so that is the same thing it is written there if i have a complementary sub sequence then the union union will be, uh, give us the next set of natural number the main uh, set and their intersection will be empty set means there will be nothing in common PDF you will get in the Google Classroom and please see the playlist complete playlist please see the complete videos only then you can understand the next concepts you know and please join us on Telegram for discussion like comment subscribe and also if uh, somebody asks for some books uh, from where I am using uh, I am using Apostle book I am also using the Rudin book for mathematical analysis. Uh, for further studies for deep studies you can use them you know so thank you very much for joining bye bye tata